Hey, welcome one and all. I'm John Zadar, and this is Wednesday before Thanksgiving, November 24th. You're watching On Top and Hot, brought to you by, that's right, Penny Boys. Everybody loves those alerts, but I'm telling you what, the education is way better than one alert. It'll keep you going and going and going. All right, I always look at OTC stocks and penny stocks here. We like to find stocks that have potential, that are gonna move. Sometimes we do DD, other times I bring you stuff I found. Today I've got a handful of stocks I wanna show you. You know, when I looked at these, funny thing was, the catalyst was not apparent. It wasn't just sitting right there to be seen. But look around a little bit and it's like, aha, I see ya. So I thought I'd share those with you today. So let's go see what I found. All right, nothing new. I'm starting on the otcmarkets.com. I do all my initial research for OTC stocks right here because this is the only site that FINRA and the SEC deposit all the information for OTC stocks. You want to look up filings and stock information, this is where it goes. So you might as well go here instead of a Google search. What's the point? First thing we're going to look at is how did the day finish on the OTC market? Ugh. Folks, I'm getting worried. I'm not kidding, I'm getting worried. We did $2.5 billion today. We've been between two and $3 billion. Whatever else is happening, that's what we're doing. But this is scary. Oh God, folks, we're down to 11 billion, 12 billion shares. Look, a slow day, what I've been used to is 30 billion. That hasn't happened for like six months now. And before that, a good day was at 50 billion. Folks, we're down to 11 billion. We're going anorexic, it's quite scary. And our trades are falling again. We had hit a half a million. We are now down to 336,000 trades. I don't know what's going on, but I'm a little concerned. All right, let's take a look at the first stock I've got on the list today. This is Yayo, at least that's what they used to be called. They're actually being called EVMO, EVMO now but they're still using the same ticker, Y-A-Y-O. They finished today at 80 cents. They are 14% up. They are on the pink tier and they are current. Now, I don't see anything here about a transfer agent or a verified profile. I'm used to seeing that. Whether it's there or not, I don't know if that's bad, but everything else looks good. And they've got independent directors. Now, the only reason you need independent directors is when you plan to uplist, whether that be to the QB, the next tier up on the OTC, where you have to audit all your records, or to the NASDAQ, where of course you're auditing all your records too. So, unless they plan on uplisting, they don't need them. So, that could be a hint. All right, what else can we see here? Let's see what sort of volume they had today. Uh, not much more than normal. 200,000, yeah, you know, maybe 5,000 more shares today. Not very much difference. What is their share count? Anything interesting to look at? Well, let me see here. Is there an F? No, there isn't. It's interesting. Uh, foreign companies, normally you'll find gaps like this. Why we don't see anything, I'm not too sure. But I can assure you this much, the float is small because the outstanding share count is only 38. That's for everybody, management, institutions, head funds, if they're in there, and me and you, everybody who's investing. So when you take away everybody else's, which is what theirs are, you're left over with the float. So it's gonna be less than 38, so that's a pretty small float. I'm happy with that. Let's see what we got for financials. Oh, folks, we got all kinds of money coming in over here. Remember, there's three zeros that we tossed behind these numbers. So their last earnings for 2020, the annual, was $7.5 million, uh, about a million more than the year before, and really, really tearing it up. The last two years compared to the years before were really strong. And do I see any disclosures over here that we want to take advantage of? Uh, 11.23, that was yesterday, and the S1. So we'll want to take a look at those two, and I think they're covered in the news. So let's go run over here and take a look at the news. Now I can find no new news here. There is nothing to show why it jumped today. Now the news we got is current, 
and it's good news. They settled a class action lawsuit. They didn't get out of it scot-free. They had to pay a million dollars, but it settled and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Investors were complaining about that. And just this month, they launched the other subsidiary distinct cars, their gig delivery technology. Gig, <laughs> meaning like a musician says, I got a gig tonight, a small job. And then they released their financials along with some other filings. Now there is other news. It's not all here. I don't know why they do that. And I'm going to show you one of them. This one is back in March. EV Mo electric vehicle motors, formerly called Yayo Inc announces a fleet acquisition of Tesla vehicles. They buy electric vehicles. They rent cars. Most of them are combustible engines, but they've been making a complete transition to electric and they plan on that being done by the end of this year. Now this original purchase was for 40 Teslas. I don't know how many they got right now, but they have over 600 electric vehicles, Tesla threes and Hyundai Konas, along with some delivery vans. Now they've got two distinct subsidiaries. They have distinct cars, no pun intended there, and rideshare rental. Now rideshare rental is just a rental company. They just rent cars to people. You go to their app, you pick your car, you pay, you book it. Now they go for $39 a day, roughly or more, all the way up to $800 a month. He gets. Then they have the new company they just kicked off, distinct cars which is providing rental vehicles and vans for gig drivers. Yeah, maybe you work for Lyft or you work for Uber. Your car got into an accident or you want a job and your car doesn't meet the criteria. You can rent a car from them. Maybe you want a job delivering pizzas. You can rent a car and go deliver pizzas. Whatever you want to do with the car. Now, this is the great thing. It's electric. You don't have to pay for gas and that is the biggest expense with all of these sort of jobs and businesses is gas. On top of that, with the ride share, uh, well let's say you're working for Uber. This company pays you a 50 cent bonus for every person that gets in the car on top of what you're already making. So you're not paying for gas and you're making extra money. And remember, you can charge these cars wherever you want so it could be done for free. It's a great deal. Now the last piece of information they had come out was their financials and they were good. Yeah, they ran into some headwinds, but it didn't seem to hurt them. They had record revenues of 2.7 million. That's up 31%. Uh, they are working on their debt. They got somebody to help them with that. That is great. Their rentals per day are up 15% and the people who are renting them and how long they're renting them are going for longer periods of time. So they're just growing in all directions. Okay, here we are over at TOS, that is Think or Swim. It's a free trading platform I got, and you can too. Just sign up with TD Ameritrade, that's free. They don't ask for a deposit. You don't actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use the platform I'm using as well. So we are looking at YAYO on the six month, four hour chart. And like a lot of charts, she is going downhill the entire way. Started off at a high of $4.26 and is down to 64 cents on her low. Her price right now is 80 cents. She bounced off that low. Now there's not a whole lot of highlights here. What does stand out is this volume. The volume is strong, even though the price has been falling. The volume has been strong and it seems to be increasing, getting stronger and stronger with bigger pokes stronger. Now, it hasn't been doing a whole lot. We had one giant peak here and a strong stretch there, but outside of that, hasn't been doing a lot. The earnings doesn't even show a lot of activity. Not really. So let's come in on that five minute, five day. All right, so we had a low bubble I mean, it fell, 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 you saw, and finally hit a true low. This isn't just for the five day, this is across the board. It hit a low bubble and a lot of people buy stocks and have value when they hit lows. And that's kind of a token sign. I'm not just talking a little bump up, I'm talking it climbs, it gets higher than what it's been doing. And this is more than what it has been doing on a regular basis. This became a catalyst for it. So we know there is no news. We know that they are launching 
the, the new division of rent renting cars to gig drivers. And, and something else I didn't mention is that when a gig driver rents the car and you're going to have other people in the car or have goods, you need insurance. So they've got a whole program there so that when you rent the car, you're also getting insurance with it and an insurance card. So when a cop pulls you over, you actually got something to show them, which is pretty well thought out. So we did have a big jump today. Um, she jumped 14%, actually higher. She started off at about 70 cents and went clear up to 86. I don't know, you've got there about uh, 20%. And she finished the day at 18%, right? 14%. Now what stands out here is that she's just under the 200. She broke it, she came down, but did not fall. She just went under the 200, which she took a lot of work to get up to is hugging the 200 and is looking for a second test. Now this is like an 80% rule, eight out of 10 times, they, they will test the line. Break it once, don't get in yet, it'll come down and then it'll test it a second time and when it breaks through, there's like a confidence built up and then it starts to climb and you get a reversal on what? Six months of downhill run. So this could be the beginning of a reversal. She's definitely making money. They have cut their debt in half. They've got the new division launching and everything looks good. They are converting their cars all to electric. So I like what they've got going. The numbers really looked good to me when I looked at their quarterly reports. So fingers crossed, this is a reversal and now underneath the 200 may be your best price at about 80 cents. Watch and see if she comes down below this 50. If you're not using these charts, you're having a hard time buying, aren't you? Because you can't actually see. You need to have charts and you need to use the same sort of setting tools that everybody's using because we all respond to the same traffic light. You got something else or you got nothing at all, you don't know when to move. Boom, you get run over. So get yourself a chart. I told you how to do that. All right, let's go take a look at the next one. So the next stock we're taking a look at is TNMD, Tianrong Med Group, a stock I probably wouldn't look at normally, and I don't think a lot of people are. It's definitely under the radar. They finished the day at 23 cents, 53% up today. Pink Current has a verified profile and a transfer agent, and this company is considered a shell risk. Now that means they're supposed to be reporting income, but they're not. Let's see if that be the case over here. Yes, they got nothing on the books and they're supposed to be doing business. So that's a concern. What is their uh, relative volume like today? Three times as much. Three. <laughs> Three times as much from 25,000 to 76,000. So something is happening. There's definitely some interest going on here. What's their share structure like? Oh, look at that, folks. No matter which way you look at it, float, DTC, or unrestricted, we are under 7 million shares. Wow, and they got a half a billion on the market, and only 7 million are in the float. Boy, the uh, owners have got to be very serious about this company, or there's some big investors, I'll tell you what. So we've got a super duper small float on this stock. Financials we just looked at, Let's see if there's any disclosures that stand out here. Uh, looks like they're late filing, uh, their latest one for September. That should be out here soon and I don't see anything else. So let's jump over to the news. Now what's really peculiar here is that I can't find any catalysts. There is no current news. There's lots of news all from this year, but nothing current, nothing fresh. I even went over to Twitter to see if I missed something. Nope, nothing there either. So I read this news and I got to say, there is potential here, huge potential. Wouldn't call it catalyst, but there's, there's going to be some activity here. And you saw the float. It's really low. So I'm going to show you a few key details you should probably be aware of. And then you can be the final judge if this company has got hidden potential. First thing I want to show you are these four press releases that came out in January. Now we're not going to jump into them, but the reason I bring them up is because January was a hot month on the charts. Prior to that, it was just flatlining. 
The first two basically repeated themselves that they had entered into an agreement to acquire Huan Media. This is China's largest railway Wi-Fi service provider, the largest in the country. The next two PRs were about them getting right on the OTC market. They went pink current and finally their stock was allowed to be sold on the US exchange again, which they were very excited about. The next two really haven't got a whole lot to say, but up here in March, we see they finally closed the deal and they own Huan Media. And I'm gonna jump into this here in just a second. But I also wanna point out the other two we're gonna to touch on too. They enter into the healthcare market and they enter into the financial market. So let's take a look at the first one. This is the one that they signed to acquire Huan Media, uh, China's largest railway Wi-Fi service provider. Now, Huan Media has been in business for a long time. They own exclusive operation rights and provide free Wi-Fi service and entertainment platforms to several railway lines. We're talking hundreds of railway lines and stations across China. Huan Media is growing at a rapid race, aiming at providing services to over 1 billion railway passengers. That's 1 billion people that can be using their Wi-Fi service. And we know how many people use free Wi-Fi. Everybody. Uh, it says Huan Media guarantees fully secured, uninterrupted service, even when the external 3G and 4G signals are weak or unavailable. Its unmatched platforms provide unique and exclusive services to passengers. Not just the Wi-Fi. Includes online ticketing, train schedule information, VIP services, onboard online shopping, travel, hotel bookings. They got a lot going on with this service. So then you look at their second piece of news. They enter into the $1 trillion healthcare market. It says today that they announced the company's interest into China's booming $1 trillion healthcare sector. Uh, the company is expanding its big data connectivity to the medical sector by providing equipment such as escort beds, chairs, wheelchairs in the hospitals under a publicly well-accepted share system and share payment scheme, something we don't have here in America. Huan Media will also provide Wi-Fi connectivity for patients and visitors in the hospitals, expanding the mobile services such as patient registration, remote patient consultation, and pharmacy prescriptions to potentially over 900 million Chinese citizens. Folks, that's more than twice the entire population of the United States. They've got a lot of customers. And this one is them connecting with the financial markets. Today, they announced that their wholly owned subsidiary had acquired a majority stake in Chinese financial service companies, which would launch the company's entrance into Chinese booming $1.5 trillion financial service sector. The internet has played a major role in the rapid development of China's financial industry. Now it says that CST, their business, is primarily focused on the three C's, computers, communications, and consumer electronics. They market and offer flexible financing for cell phones, laptops, tablets, game consoles, TVs, etc. The financing has generated over 40 million, that's 6.25 million in American money, in merchandise purchasing cash flow. And they are growing at two to three times that size every year. So this is a booming sector where they are helping this company. They've got the healthcare sector that they are booming with and they've got their railway. And keep in mind, folks, we're talking, they are covering all of China. How big is that? So we haven't got a financial out on them yet. This will be the first one coming. I think it's a secret giant that hasn't woke up yet. Well, that chart doesn't look as bad as it looks. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. Yes, it is on a downtrend. There's no doubt about it. It had a high of $1.65, short-lived. It was really at about a dollar then, and it fell all the way down to four cents here. And today, it's at 23 cents with 58% gains. So what is it that looks good about this chart to me? Well, take a look over here. You see these jumps? That's a 50% jump in four hours. That's a 70% jump. That's an 80% jump in four hours. Let me back out now. Look at the size of those jumps 
compared to the size of these jumps. These are 150, 180, 210 percent gains on these jumps, folks. That's humongous. This has only got six million, seven million in the float, and they've got a business in China that we're not going to call it startup. It's huge. They're servicing millions, no billions of people. A small company in China is relative to a big company here when it comes to customer base. So there is a lot of potential in what this company can do. They just went pink. They just got back on the OTC market. If we look at this long period back, let's look at a year. Uh, let's go back. I think I have to go back a little bit further. Yeah. Okay. So you can see they were dead in the water and they've been coming back and they're now, you can see the volume is coming. So we got a crossover here, and by the way, I'm looking at three years on a weekly. On a weekly, it says we're about ready to start coming back up. Wow, what a long forecast. And looking at that five minute, five day, you can see today was almost the same as two days ago. Both days started off down here at about 12 cents, and both days went up here to 24, 25 cents. So they each had a 50% gain, 100% gain jumps. So this bounces hard, came right back down, all the way back down and all the way back up. So this is a good stock to put on your list to buy, ride that bounce up, get out, get out. Don't worry about it climbing. It's going to fall, right? It moves in big spanses. So when it falls, buy in again and catch the next bounce. Folks, this is one you can make money over and over and over again. More money on the bounces than if you just held it and it grew. However, in saying that, you could take some free shares. Every time it bounces and you're going to pull your money out, leave some free shares in there. Each time you do that, by the time this thing grows in six months, they get some financials out and we see what they're doing, you could have yourself a chunk of free shares built up and this thing take off with six million, seven million in the float. And God only knows how far it would climb then. Imagine if it went to $1.65 right now, which was its last high. So I see a lot of potential in playing this over and over and over again. Right now, she seems to be on a high, at least on this low. We don't know what she's gonna do. Everything looks strong, but it looked strong the other day too. Everything was pointing up and it fell. Everything is pointing up right now, so it could fall. If it falls, for God's sake, you may want to buy it. The next time it bounces up, you've got your money back plus some, right? All right, let's move on to the next one. The next stock we're taking a look at is iCity. I-C-T-Y is the ticker. They finished the day at 0023. You got a nice sub penny stock here with 27% gains today. Also on the pink tier, current and as I'm used to seeing, verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. Now the company is a declared shell company. They're not making any money. They're not supposed to. They're in, well, a waiting position for who knows what exactly right now. Now the company says they're involved in a lot of different things. They say they're involved with cannabis, hospitality, commercial and residential development industries, both in the United States and internationally. Let's see what sort of relative volume they had today. Uh, maybe just over twice, 131,000 to just under 3,000. Twice as much, that's not anything to complain about, especially if you were going up. What is their share count? Oh, share count is rough. Now it says here, and this was just a couple weeks ago, so I'm gonna buy it. It says that they have about three, four billion shares in the float. All right, so they got, it could actually be seven billion, it could be 7 billion shares in the float. So we're just gonna place that aside. Financials, well, we know they're not making anything. That, that was disclosed by telling us they were a shell company. And let's see what else we got here. All their filings are caught up. Anything current over here? No. So let's go jump into the news and see what we got. This is getting ridiculous. There is not only no news for today, there's barely any news at all. We got one press release. This came out mid-October, and to be honest, it is worthy of considering. Uh, the company had been granted a temporary injunction from the state of Florida. They are looking to invalidate 1.6 billion shares of common stock that they claim one of their shareholders got fraudulently. 
Now, I don't know how you go about getting 1.6 billion shares fraudulently, but whatever the case is, they are hard at it trying to get them taken off of the outstanding share count. So that's gonna give us shareholder value, no doubt. Now, there's no other news that we saw there, but I went out on Google and I did find this. This came out in May. This is iCity acquiring Mountain Sky. This is a hemp CBD company. They produce hemp CBD oils, gummies, creams, both for humans and pets. Now, to be honest, I looked at their financials, their quarterly report. They've got no income, zero. The only money they have is what they're spending every month to pay the bills. So I don't know where this company comes into play. They got it back in March. I would presume enough time has gone by to make money. So why I don't see any revenues there, I don't know. So if there's no money coming in and we don't see anything happening here, why am I even looking at this stock today? One reason, only one reason. Over here at Twitter, you come to the company's own Twitter account site. So we're not reading what anyone else has to say. This is coming from the horse's mouth. This came out just a few hours ago today. ICTY is finalizing paperwork for its first major acquisition of a multimedia company. One specific area that is exciting for all parties is the acquisition's participation in the launching of a new metaverse. Dun, 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 dun. There you go. That's why it jumped today. Not only are they making an acquisition, but they mention the word metaverse. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Details will be shared shortly. So there you go. That's why it's running today. They've got a deal with something to do with metaverse. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at the chart and see how much dun, 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 dun is going on over there. ICTY, six month, four hours, looks like a big bowl. She started off at 0055 and she has ended down here at a low at 0009. And though they make that look like a big space, honestly, on the chart, when you start having pennies and dollars, it's, it's so small you can't even put two lines together. That is very, very close. Now we see a lot of volume right there. And that all corresponds to that only news press we saw about the courts giving them leeway to try to get that 1.6 billion shares off of the outstanding count. A lot of excitement there. And it took that. It just broke the 200-day SMA here. The news hit it and it launched. Now it's come back down and it is tagging onto it. Now it's bounced off of it. That's one, that's two. It should continue up, but there's no guarantee here. However, knowing that they've got this acquisition coming up about some company in the media metaverse sector could get this thing going. If he can just tease them with little tidbits of news until it happens, this stock could climb. She's got a nice roll up right now, a nice recovery. Doesn't look real strong on the hourly, but it doesn't look real weak either. Let's come in on that five minute, five day. You can see she hit a low bubble right there and synchronizing, boy, you wonder if they do that on purpose. He came out with his tweet and boom, on top of the low bubble, it took off. Now it's taken away about 50%. It went up, came down, and it's right about the 50% mark and hanging around. And it's above the 200. It is sitting right on top of that, which is a very good sign. It was underneath it, fell to that low bubble, and has decided I don't want to stay low. So when we zoom in now, we can see we had some reverse volume here, some big bumps. MACD's coming up, RSI is strong. So I would actually think this is ready to continue climbing. And any news press is gonna give it the extra bump it needs to define its up growth. All right, let's go see the next one. I've got more. We're now looking at BRCHF Brain Chip Holdings. This is a semiconductor company. This is one you may wanna watch. Semiconductors are in big demand and short supply. 
So they finished the day off here at 55 cents with about 20% gains and they are on the QX. It is the best here on the OTC market, most transparent. They report everything. They could easily be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange if one, they weren't foreign. That's what that F is back there. They're a foreign company. And two, they, they had the right price. You gotta be at least $3 to be uplisted to the NASDAQ. Uh, they have a verified profile. They got all the good stuff here. They do want to be uplisted. They've got independent directors, though I don't know why they need them. They can't go to the NASDAQ. And they're not a penny stock. They're penny stock exempt. That means you have to have so much money in the bank and you have to have been in business for so long. Those two points show that you're not a startup company and you're not a scam operation. So they trust you and you don't have to follow all of the filing rules and OTC rules. But because you can't go on the major exchanges, you've gotta be stuck here and sold here on the OTC market, but you get to have your freedom. All right, how much volume was there today in this company? A lot. They normally do 163,000 shares. Today they did about 700. That's about uh, three and a half times as much, which is quite a lot. They got a market cap of uh, three quarter billion. So I anticipate they're making money, which we'll check out here in a minute. What is their share count? No, oh, share count's kind of high. 1.5 billion shares. Most of that is in the float. They've got 1.7 billion total. What are the financials then? Let's see. Uh, no financial data available. Well, again, foreign companies, this happens a lot. So they do have their financials here. They filed them all on time. Anything else here, like any 8Ks or anything? Uh, not really. Nope, nothing to look at here. So let's jump over to the news and see what we got there. Well, it looks like we got a habit going here, a pattern of no news. So what, we've got no reason for why it jumped today? Well, not exactly. I think this news that came out three days ago is the reason it's still jumping. They tell us here that Brain Chip Holdings, a leading provider of ultra low power, high performance artificial intelligence technology, the world's first commercial producer of neuromorphic AI chips and IP, today announced that Mega Chips has licensed the Brain Chip Ikeda IP. Now, a multi-billion dollar global fabless semiconductor company based in Japan, Megachip provides chip solutions that fulfill various requirements, including low power consumption, cost and time to market while achieving breakthrough functions and performance by fusing knowledge of large scale integrations and applications for problems in device development. They tell us down here that Brain Chips Akita technology brings artificial intelligence to the edge in a way that existing technologies are not capable. The Akita and intellectual property can be used in applications including smart home, smart health, smart city, and smart transportation. These applications include, but are not limited to, check out all of these, home automation and remote controls, industrial internet of things, robotics, security cameras, sensors, unmanned aircraft, autonomous vehicles, medical instruments, object detection, sound detection, odor and taste detection, gesture control, and cyber security. Folks, we're talking about semiconductors. This is a company in Japan that's got cutting edge AI technology that they're going to incorporate on everybody's new technology coming out. This could be a huge giant leap. It really could. So I expect a lot of things from this not happening yet, but it is just on the cusp again, right? So let's go take a look at that chart and I'll show you what this news did and how the market feels about it. So as usual, we got it up on the six month, four hour for BRCHF. And what stands out to me is that 200 SMA. Going across months, it takes a long time to arch and turn around and right now it's turning up. It has actually started, it's up. We can see she had a high of 65 and a low of 25. This is where the price stays. It does not get out of this gap all the way for a year. What really stands out though is that price action. Look at this folks. Look at how it is just taking off. The velocity and the strength is very strong. As is the volume. She gets volume regularly, but it's gotten stronger now. 
All right, let's come in. I wanted to show you about this news. So that news came out on the 21st. This is the 19th, hit a low bubble there, 39 cents. And this is the 21st right there. So it takes off, actually it's the 22nd, the 21st was the weekend, and it jumped out 20%, went sideways for the rest of the day and another day, and without any more news, took off today and jumped another, let me see, 46 to 65, now she jumped another 50%, came down. She lost a good portion of that, but she hit that high again. She hit the high that she had six months, four hour chart that we were looking at. She is ready to break free of this gap that she's been in for over a year. She's got a hot semiconductor Akita AI chip that everybody's going to be putting into their products. More and more products are coming out and there's not enough chips for them. And nobody, nobody has this kind of AI chip. So they're going to dominate the market. I see this as being incredibly strong in growth to come. Think about our competitors. Think of any semiconductor company. Are they at 50 cents? Heck no. No. 20, 30, 50, 100 dollars. I don't know where this is going to go, but they've got something hot. They've got something nobody else has got. And now they got a company that is going to put it out there for them. I'm excited. Can't you tell? This is a great price to buy in. It is on the 50. It has just broke it. It could drop, but I get the feeling with this stair step and what's going on, I, I get the feeling this is going to grow. That doesn't mean it won't dip, but I think she's going to be on an uptrend now, folks. She'll have her dips, but you better start accumulating now before it gets way out of your price range. All right, folks, as much as I hate to say this, this is the last one. It happens. All right, we are looking at ICOA. ICOA finished today at just over a penny, a brilliant buy in price. Penny goes from one cent to two cents, it's doubled, right? Right? You've doubled your money. Buy at a penny, it doubles at two cents, triples at three cents. If you buy at five cents, it has to go to 10 cents to double, 15 cents to triple. Buying on the one just makes the most sense if you want to make fast, strong profits. There's no middle ground between one and two. It's 100%. All right. This is on the pink tier. It's current with all the goodies, verified profile, and a transfer agent. Now, they tell us here that ICOA is a national provider of wireless and wired broadband internet network support for broadband access. They have also been moving out into other sorts of stuff like DeFi blockchain, NFTs, and the crypto space. Who isn't, right? So what sort of volume did they have today? Uh, they had about 40% increase. They went from 60,000 to 72,000. That's not bad. How's their share count? That's not good. They got 6 billion shares, no matter how you slice it here. 6 billion shares on the float. He gads. Financials, we got any hope over here? Uh, it looks like it at first glance, but that's 2014 and back. So no, we've got no financials here at all. Uh, I do know they've got disclosures. Those are all on time. And to be honest, I have not jumped into any of them. I just know that the company is pink current and they've got some interesting things going on right now. Speaking of, let's check them out and go to the news. Well, what do you know? We got some news, finally. And I'm not going to read it. Well, not at first. I want to point out these two acquisitions. They've got one they did already complete for $185 million. This is IBG Finance. They finished that last month. Uh, this company originally launched in 2020. IBG is a decentralized financed wealth platform. That's what DEFI stands for, decentralized finance. Uh, this is designed to bring simplicity to users interested in entering the cryptocurrency and the DEFI market. And they are equipped with the latest robo advisory technology that offers algorithm driven recommendations. The other acquisition is still in play. This was put out in October the 26th. So they said in 30 days, this would most likely be closed. So we've got like two more days and it'll be done. This one is valued at $240 million. This is BGBF. This is Asia's first insured Bitcoin denominated fund. 
and they are structured and regulated as a central bank. So this is more than just a business, it's a bank. And the last piece of news, the news today is good news. ICOA settles and writes off $124 million in debt. So you've got two new acquisitions, a lot of debt written off, and one of those acquisitions is about ready to close, which once that news press comes out, this should bounce, right? Let's go take a look at the chart and see what these other pieces of news did to it. Well, ICOA's chart is looking pretty good. Different, that's for sure. You can see we had a low here of 0002 and it is now over two cents. That's a 10,000% gain here. She woke up here, slumbered a bit, and in August, she just took off. And this is weeks of climbing, folks. Weeks. It just did not stop went sideways for a while and then took another huge surge and it's come all the way back down to the 200 it fought so hard to get away from it has broke it and it's come back up which is a real good sign let's focus in on that a little bit all right we can see she kept less than 50 percent of her gains today she went up and came down but she is sticking above the 200 which is very important this is on the four hour now, if we come in on the five minute, five day, that's a different 200. It's based on five day data. And we are above that 200 too. And it's going sideways. It fought hard to get over it. Look, it was under it for days and days and days. It tagged it a few times here, but could not muster up enough energy to get over it. Today it did and it's hanging there. So I get the feeling this is gonna to continue to grow. I think this is a real good price. It could come lower. It's got a long ways it could fall. When you look at that four hour chart, it could come all the way down to here. There's not a lot of supports here to hold it and it would just meander slowly. So if it comes back down over the 200, there's a possibility you can get a much better price. But if it gets some news, if a PR comes out, on top of that low bubble right now, boom, boom, this thing is gonna stay above the 200 on both charts and it's gonna to start to climb. And I think this is gonna take off. Cryptos, NFTs, these new exchanges that they're putting out, this stuff is hot. The market is exploding and Asia is very much exploding into the crypto market. So this is new, we gotta give it a chance to roll around a bit and make some money and show us what they can do. So in the meantime, you can watch this and see if the price is gonna go down. But you may wanna get an entry position now because it may not go down and just start climbing from this point forward. So there we go five different types of stocks, all that had catalysts, but not the way you'd expect. They weren't up front, they weren't in the news. Most of them you had to look at and see they've got things in the workings that are about ready to finish, about ready to start. And I feel that's the best time to get into something. Not after it's already taken off, not after everybody's found it. You want to be the first one, and I'm trying to bring you stocks here that have potential, that could explode, that are at low prices right now, so that you can make the best profits. Remember folks, do more DD. I bring you enough to get your interest. You go find out if they're really worth your investment. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.